Hey everybody, this is Jay. This is Kevin Johnson over at jkevinjohnson.com. Uh, I'm here with our minister Rob Johnson, who is the author, uh, the content contributor, the blogger over at the Watchman's Cry. And uh, we just real quickly wanted to have a nice, uh, short, and simple conversation about salvation and what it means to be saved uh, in times like these. Um, so uh, just real quickly, Minister Rob, can you just briefly introduce yourself and just let you know the people out there know who you are and where you come from and uh, how long you've been in the ministry? Yes, I'm a minister, uh, Rob Johnson, and uh, I pretty much grew up in the house of God. Um, and God has pretty much gifted me uh, with the gift of teaching. And um, I expound the scriptures, and I enjoy uh, the Word of God, and I share the Word of God openly uh, with as many as will listen. Um, you know, God has opened up doors in, uh, in uh, locally in the jail. Mm -hmm. um, he's certainly in, uh, in prisons. And, uh, and, of course, we've gone to the street. I went to the street with some other, uh, other ministers. And so um, that's part of, of what, who I am. And, and, and a key part of who I am is, is ministry uh, and, and to those that are lost, uh, those that may not know God. Yeah. Um, because it's very important because of the times you're living in. Um, that we heed to the call of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, it's safe to say that you've been out on the battlefield, uh, but out on the battlefield for absolutely. a long time. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Well, I just wanted to have a, a nice little simple conversation to kind of introduce you to the people in a, in a video uh, interview type format. I know that you've done a lot of writing uh, in the past at um, The Watchman's Cry. And uh, I just, you know, I've been prompted, I've been moved to, to kind of bring, uh, you know, you out to the forefront and just have a conversation because you have a very, um, a, 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 ver a nice way about just simplifying the scriptures and bringing things home to where even the most simplest, uh, the most complex of ideas can be broken down. Uh, in such a way that even a little child can understand them. And this is important for us today, given the world that we live in. We live in a world that is always pushing fear and anxiety amongst the people and the populations. And uh, it's, it's, it's good to know that um, the voice of uh, the cry of the watchman is that safety is found in the ship in the realm of Jesus Christ. Now, that sounds real churchy, and you know, uh, growing up in the church, I, uh, I grew up around a lot of language that I really didn't understand was being talked and spoken of, and spoken, and a lot of scriptures I took for cliche, and I didn't have a real clear understanding about what they meant, and why it was so important that I really had a clear understanding of that. Uh, so this is why we're sitting down and we're talking about salvation and how simplified and how simple uh, salvation is and what it really means to be saved and why I need to be saved by Jesus Christ. There are people in the world that are saying, I can save myself. I don't need to be saved. I don't need nobody else to save me because I am, I am human. I am powerful. It, my uh, power comes from within, under the knowledge, under the rays of the following of Lu Lucifer that a lot of these um, high occultic people are pushing and propagating and propagandized right now is saying that under knowledge and gnosis and under the, my uh, own power, I have the power to ascend and free myself. When the Bible is, is talking in direct opposition to what the Bible is telling us as being the called out. So it's important that being a part of the church that we understand these concepts clearly so that we can walk uh it, as mature perfect uh bride you know brides of Christ so with that what is salvation what what is what does it mean to be saved well looking biblically what it means to be saved is um saved from really ourselves yeah um from a sinful inherent nature that is against God against um the nature of God, and that's why Christ came is to save is to save us from from this nature 
that is uh, hostile toward God. You know, God created man in his image and his likeness. And really quick, and I'm going to use a scripture, but it will go to, and, and keeping it as basic as we can, mm -hmm. um, we're looking at Romans, the fifth chapter, and it starts at 12th verse. And this is Apostle Paul expounding. And um, salvation is not complicated. Um, we, we understand what put us in this position. And this is what he says, Wherefore, as by one man, by one man, sin entered into the world. Sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And once again, we're going to fall down uh, the, the same chapter, Romans the fifth chapter, and we'll look at Romans the uh, 17th verse. And Paul says, For if by one man's offense death reigned, mm -hmm. that's through Adam. Death reigns, it rules even today. The graveyards are full. Um, so, and we go down even further to the 18th verse. Wherefore, as by one man's offense, the judgment came unto all men to condemnation. We all stand guilty before a holy God. And going further down to the 19th verse, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So, it's our sin that has separated us from God, from our, a fellowship with God, a, a relationship with God. And it's only through... Um, through Christ, through the Messiah, through Jesus, that we can find uh, reconciliation. We can find wholeness. Uh, we can find healing um, from um, this present state of uh, sin or sin nature that we inherited through Adam's disobedience. Uh, if we look, if we go to John, the third chapter, and, you know, once again, you know, going quickly, um, you know, Jesus was approached by Nicodemus at night, and he was and he was curious uh, the teachings of Jesus and and what he was expounding on, and it's dealing with you know uh, entering to the kingdom of God, and this is what Jesus said: "Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God." Mm -hmm. And we'll go straight down a little further to the fifth verse. And verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and a spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Christ is saying, and I'll go even further real quick. Go down to the sixth verse. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. There has to be a rebirth. There has to be a renewing of our spirit, a regeneration of our minds and hearts. Uh, for in, in order for us to... Um, truly experience the salvation, the deliverance, the healing that God wants for all men. And that's only through faith in Christ. There has to be a regeneration of uh, the Spirit of God. And, and salvation is so that when you hear the gospel, there is repentance. There is a repentant heart and um, a mindset to, to call on God and to seek His face. And, and so uh, salvation is not complicated. And it's through the Messiah, it's through Christ, through the hearing of the gospel, that we can find salvation. Okay. So, re so really what you're saying is that to be salvation means just to simply be saved from your current circumstances. Current, yeah, exactly. And then because of the inerrant, because of the um, mistake or the... the, uh, the um, the transgression, the of, transgression Adam. of Adam. Right. He, he, he broke the commandment. He broke the commandment. Right. And we are now born in a state right. that is against God. Our, our flesh, uh, its desire is towards evil. It's towards evil. Exactly. And it's been corrupted. And in his image, we are born corrupted. Exactly. So now we need set to be saved exactly. from our state. And David said something real key. I'll just I'll just jump in here. David said, "I was shaping." This is Psalms mm. fifty-one yeah, yeah. five. I was shaping in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. That's all of us. That's from that's from our conception in in the womb of our mother, and even coming out. Even the scripture says uh, it talks about um, uh, that the heart of man being deceitful, desperately wicked. We have that nature. That is antithetical to God. Is that's that's in opposition to to God, and and God just simply wants to to repair. Yes, okay, and to repair. make whole and to heal and to restore. 
uh, that right fellowship, that right relationship with him, and that's only through faith in, in Jesus. It's in none other, no other name that's, that, that God is going to acknowledge uh, that we can be saved under. So um, that's important to understand that the basics of, uh, of salvation is not complicated. It's just a matter of faith and believing in the gospel. And the way to salvation is not by works. It's not by what, how many things I do right. But it's simply by me just uh, recognizing mm -hmm. my limitations as being a human being and that I submit and I invite and I allow uh, the Spirit of God to come into my life, into my heart, and restore and repair those things that are broken in me yes. so that I can now yes. live yes. a life that is vice-free, uh, that mentally I'm free, of any strongholds that have uh, entrenched themselves in my thinking. I'm free emotionally, that I'm not no longer dwelling in fear, anxiousness, bitterness, hopelessness, depressed, oppressed, suppressed. But now I'm living and I'm experiencing an emotional state of freedom and joy and contentment. And also, even there, I, once I, I really start getting into word, even physically, you know, he said he wants to dwell in a boat in us physically. So even my physical well-being becomes uh, renewed and regenerated and yes. restored. Yes. And then now I'm being set up and matured into a person that can live a righteous uh, life that is filled with all the sweetness and goodness. He said, oh, oh, come and see. Come taste and see how good it is, right? The Lord is good, yes. The Lord is good. He's good. So and he said, he, and there's another area where he talks about um, this way of living is sweeter than honey. And a lot of times the world will point their fingers at uh, the call out and say, you guys are living lives that is boring. And you guys, y'all don't do the things we do. Mm -hmm. Look at what we do. We're having fun with uh, the orgies. And we're having fun listening to the music and going to the clubs and being violent. And just living life, I'm, we're doing me. Look at you guys living by rules. You guys are restricted. When in truth, Jesus has come to free us. Free us from that very, very nature. Yes, to rescue us. Rescue us, yes. Okay, got you. Well, I, I want to cut the conversation off right here. And I'm deliberately being short. And that uh, I want to just put a taste in y'all's mouths out there. To come back to the Watchman's Cry to jkevinjohnson.com and just kind of uh, follow along with us as we discuss salvation and how simple it is and that uh, when you accept uh, the calling of the Spirit of God in your life, uh, you can live a life uh, of free of faith, fun, and fitness. You can live a, a life that is well. Uh, and that uh, others will want to replicate in their lives as well. So this is Kevin with Minister Rob, uh, Robbie Johnson at jkevinjohnson.com, and you'll find him over at uh, The Watchman's Cry. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you all with your, your uh, encouraged, words of encouragement, criticisms, or questions, or whatever it may be that you might want to comment on. We look forward to hearing from you all. Uh, so may the grace of Jesus be with you all. Always.